All right, here we go. We're gonna start our new series of videos. Um, kind of my equipment overviews and really just the explanation of, okay, why I bought this piece of equipment. And we're gonna go off of, uh, in order, time frame as when I bought it. And there's gonna be some equipment in here that I've sold since then and I might make a brief mention and I, I probably will have to to make it all work out but our roto grind up here is the first piece of equipment I bought um, actually I mean I bought some pickups and stuff before that but this is the actual first piece of uh, farm equipment that I bought for my operation and I just wanted to get a quick shot of it running before what I'll do is when I'm done grinding, I got let my phone battery charge. I'll take the tractor and hay grinder and, and park it where I usually park it, and then we'll just do a walk around and, and, and go over it and explain it that way. Uh, so like right now, I'm grinding square bales of triticale, and so like the square bales, I'll stack them up and I'll put them uh, in a row and take all the strings off, whereas round bales with the net wrap, you don't have to take it off at all. I mean, you just drop them in there. And most of my bales only have two, two and a half wraps on them. So, but big square bales, you really need to take the, you can grind it with the twine on there, but it ends up, you end up with a lot of twine in the in the ration. And it, it's just a big pain. It's not good for the cattle, because uh, it's just too much for them. Now, little bitty, uh, small twine off round bales you don't have to take that off you can grind that right up and it's just fine but it's the twine on these big square bales where you run into the problem so this is what I do is I just stack them up in here uh, pull the twine off it it is more time consuming than say like a, a round bale because you can just get them up in here and, and take them out as you need them but that's where that's at. It, you know, it's what I got now. I ground up all my round bales. Now I'm onto the square bales. And they, round bales, I would say, are better for grinding, just time wise. Uh, square bales are great for storage, but that's not what this video is about. So, just getting you kind of some shots of it working. I'm going to have to stop it here in a little bit and move the chute so it goes uh so it doesn't fill up that one little area and we'll kind of go from there okay so roto grind 760 uh this is going to be a walk around of the machine just your basic tub uh it's got four rollers that keep it in place um this machine is well used and it's actually I bought this machine used the new ones this one had it too uh, there's like a handle here and I'll get to that just to deal on the inside uh, these are supposed to have a cover didn't have a cover when I bought it and the new ones are just a little bit different here on the inside but uh as far as the simplicity of the machine, it's phenomenal. Uh, this is your tub speed setting. So you just lock your hydraulics constant in the tractor and you can adjust your speed of your tub here. You know, slower for wet bales, faster for dry bales. Uh, it's 1000 PTO and pretty, pretty simple. Uh, this one's been upgraded to the governor's sensor here. So, you just uh, set your engine adjustment and you can fine tune it, which, I mean, it really doesn't affect much. Uh, if you got a smaller horsepower tractor, it does. Uh, but you just, this is your engine drop. So, if you're, you're bogging your engine down, it'll, what this does is it senses the speed of your PTO. And it will 
stop the tub. So it allows your PTO to catch back up. And of course, they had a phone call come in. Um, this grinder itself, pull that down there, just a giant hammer mill. Uh, these are these are your hammers. They are reversible. And these ones are starting to get some wear on them. Uh, you can see what a new side looks like. They work really well. They're not hard to replace. You gotta rotate this up to this hole here and you pull this pin. It's just gotta really, or no, it's it's this hole up here and you gotta pull that snap ring off that side and that's not, that's not the fun part, but. I, I don't know why my phone is doing, making this so hard, but I'll just start this over. Uh, it's just a hammer mill. There's six sets of these hammers. I believe, uh, maybe, I think it's six sets, might be seven of them, but I'm pretty sure it's six. They're not hard, uh, they're not hard to replace, they're not fun to replace, I'll say that. You gotta rotate them up, they got a snap ring on this side, and they're just, they're pretty, they're pretty difficult sometimes. Uh, just, you gotta have a huge set of snap ring pliers. Pretty sure this isn't factory, uh, or it, it is there, but somebody just cut a hole through it and put a pin through it. Uh, the chute, you can see mine's pretty worn out. I hit it with a square bale and clean it all up. Uh, most of them are taller now, and they have a hydraulic cylinder up there. But these little bearings all need to be replaced. I actually have all the bearings now. Uh, three main bearings back here. This one's brand new. I just replaced this one. It was not taking grease anymore. So I replaced this bearing. They're not terribly hard. Uh, this one's not. The other ones probably aren't going to be fun. But uh, just regular two inch bearing on there. So there's only three of them. There's one there. There's one in, on the other side. And then there's one up here at the PTO. Right there. So I'm sure you... It will kind of get into the tub. Let me pause this so I can climb up this ladder. All right, this this is the inside of the tub, and there's our little bitty step to get on the inside. <coughs> Whoo, slick. Here's our hammer mill. Brings the hay around and the hammers here just just fly up right here. So I mean, we're taking a big bite. Uh, the thing about this is I bought this machine used and they welded a new floor in it and this is supposed to be adjustable and it's not so it takes the full bite of the hammer and it, it you got to have quite a few ponies on it I used to have it I had it on several tractors we'll get into that but yeah so that just takes it and you see that bar right there at my finger? There's several of those. That's what kind of stops it, the hay, and allows it to get beat up more. Yeah, a little bit of wear on that one right there. I've only ever had to replace one of these hammers. So, and it actually broke in half. Getting some wear on her. But, yeah, that's... That's the inside of the tub. Uh, it is getting some wear right here where this thing has been rubbing. You know, a little, a little bit of a hole there, but I don't know why. But that's just how it is. 
Here's a hydraulic motor here that drives that. We'll get out of the machine and I'll show you. Okay. Got a bit of a leak under here. Uh, that's our hydraulic motor there. And that's what drives that tub. And it's on, a, on the spring tension so it can move. But it used to be belt driven governor. So that's how that works. There's the other bearing there. Overall, it's a very good machine. It's not a, I'm, I'm getting over my sickness. I'm still sick and it's, I, of course I'm climbing around on this thing. It's, it's not a fast machine at all, but it is a good machine, uh, especially price point on it. So now that you've gotten the overview of the machine, We'll start talking about why I bought this for me and go from there. All right. I don't know, this video may be two parts, maybe three parts. Uh, so, just now leaving the hay grinder, let's talk about why I bought the machine. Uh, number one, there's, uh, there's two options for me. There, is a hay buster 1000 uh yellow machines red tub conveyor belt or the 11 1100 or or 1030 one of those four machines then there is the roto grind uh, i think there's the 1090 i think that's a number and then the 760. i bought the machine because number one, there's no hay grinders locally. Nobody does custom hay grinding. I get this question all the time. Your machine's so slow, just hire somebody to do it. Nobody does it. I have a neighbor that hires me to do it because nobody grinds hay here. Uh, no, there's just, the only people that are feeding cattle have their own hay grinders and there's not many people feeding their own cattle. The other deal is big feed yards. Now, they, they're they not feeding a lot of hay. They will feed some hay. They are either having their hay ground, uh, by, they're either doing it themselves, uh, the one big yard locally, they do it all themselves. The other medium sized yard, they have a roto grind hay grinder. They only use it in the fall on wean calves. Or if they are incorporating a large amount of hay, they buy ground hay. And it's shipped from 120 miles away. So, so that's, that's our area. There's just not the hay grinders. Okay, uh, I bought the machine when I did. I bought it five years ago, something like that. I had a vertical mixer at the time. Uh, it was old worn out uh, just, it was a harsh 700 or 750 tornado they, harsh didn't build it arts way manufacturing built it giant pile of junk a vertical mixer takes 20 minutes to grind up a bale of hay fine enough to feed it uh, and so the mixer was we had had to take it apart and rebuild it parts of it and that's very expensive so what I did because it was it was eating fuel like crazy it was wearing on the machine I bought this grinder for ten thousand dollars I could grind up two weeks worth of hay in two hours I could grind up a day's worth of hay in 20 minutes with that other deal so it's saving a tremendous amount of fuel to begin with. And I'm sorry, anyone who has a vertical mixer, get your head ground. You're gonna save so much in fuel, it's worth it. You know, and that's really, that's what I've, I've seen in them. If you're feeding a lot of hay, it saves a lot of time. I didn't buy an, a big one at the time because I didn't have the horsepower. I had, I was borrowing a neighbor's 4630 
I used it for a couple months. Uh, then I put it on a 966 International. And as you saw, the way that machine was set up, it was all that tractor could do to run it because it was taking the full bite. And that tractor was worn out. So then I bought a 4630. That's one I currently still have. It, it runs it pretty good. But a tractor that size trying to run a full bite on that mixer, uh, it, it they get a little warm. And that's, I then I I had to go to the 7800 and 7810 because that tractor was worn out. But you can buy one of those mixtures for $10,000 and that you can save a lot of fuel. A lot of fuel. I, I imagine I probably saved that much in the past five years just in fuel versus running them vertical and time. You know, time is money, fuels money. Uh, currently, where I'm at, uh, a hay buster with a conveyor belt, I think would be really nice grinding into that barn. Uh, but a used one, 40,000, 30,000? That's, that's just, that's a very, very large payment to be making when you're trying to build an operation. Now, if I had everything paid for, and that's the only thing, I'd buy one in a heartbeat. But I would also look at a new roto grind, and honestly, uh, I may look at a, another roto grind anyway. Uh, at some point, when this one gets completely worn out, I may look at one. Uh, I would look at one very heavily before I would buy a hay buster, just because when you are building. In operation yourself or with a partner or somebody and you're starting out the equipment can break you or it can make your whole operation and I got my little helper here she's pouting because I didn't let her get in my lap uh, and that's that's really where that's at. at at the time you know I had a I had a mixer that was about to fall apart uh, and I needed to pr I needed to make its life a little longer, and it did. It worked very well. Uh, didn't have another issue with it shearing bolts. The mixture was shearing bolts up in it in the planetary. Giant, giant nightmare. Never buy a cheap mixer because you're going to spend that much or twice as much on them. Uh, so if you are just getting into the operation get you a roto grind if you have to grind hay and there's not an option uh available for someone to come grind and honestly at seven to ten dollars a bale you can pay for that machine yourself if you are doing a grow yard and you're using a lot of hay buy your own machine yes it's uh it's expensive but you're going to be paying that to somebody else anyway and that when you're paying on that machine that's equity that's, uh, that is just money to the bank. And so, okay, you use the machine, you wanna upgrade, you get your operation, or it's not quite what you wanna do, you can sell that machine. And, you know, it's a tangible asset. Paying somebody else is just money going out. Paying yourself to do it is very beneficial, very beneficial. And so that's why I bought the hay grinder. Uh, is a hay buster faster? Yes, I actually ran one a couple of weeks ago. It, it was worn out machine, I granted that, but it they are much faster. Uh, a lot less dust to get around the tractor. <coughs> they kicked hay out of the top of them a lot more than this one did. I, uh, I'm not a fan of that at all. They kicked hay out way more out the top. I'm not a fan of that. It does happen, anyone you get's gonna do that. But, uh, they are they are faster but are they that much faster for the price point for for 20 or 30 thousand more for a used machine no it's, it's not worth it unless you're looking into grinding in a very specific area and then okay then maybe uh, you know you don't want to blow a motor in your tractor 
the one benefit the roto grind has over the hay buster is the roto grind can grind wet hay and it it will grind it it's not fun but it will grind it hay busters hate them absolutely hate them that plugs them up all the time uh you can set a roto grind up where it won't completely plug her down uh and that is a huge benefit so you know you get a haystack that got wet won't dry out you've got to get hay ground you can get it done and it you won't be pulling your hair out to do it so that's that's where i'm going with that i just uh those are the benefits i saw to the machine versus spending four times as much for a hay buster but if you have any questions, uh, I, I can do a follow-up video to this, or I can just answer them in the comments, and we'll go from there. So, thanks for watching.